The following stories are based on experiences from Hmong hunters. The Hmong are a group of people from Southeast Asia. Some of them also reside in China. They aren't from any one country, but are from certain regions of Asia. However, these two stories took place here in the States. They are two separate stories about the same place. The title of the story is Black Mountain, but the translation could also mean Dark Mountain. The Hmong also used the word mountain, but they were really describing a really steep hill. The Hmong people use a very limited amount of words, so one word could mean multiple things depending on the context. They mainly practice shamanism. It is a religious practice that involves a practitioner who is believed to interact with a spirit world through altered states of consciousness such as a trance. The goal of this is usually to direct the spirits or spiritual energies into the physical world for healing or another purpose. The people interacting in these practices are called shamans. The Hmong are highly superstitious people. They strongly believe that ghosts, spirits, and deities exist amongst us. Whenever someone is sick or isn't feeling well, they would consult a shaman for spiritual guidance or healing. If need be, a healing ritual may even be performed to help that person feel better. The reason for this is because they believe the person's soul may have lost its way or has been manipulated and trapped by another entity. So without further ado, let's get on with the story. Five friends wanted to go hunting and couldn't decide on where to go. The party of five were... Chewie, his friend Tao, Tao's cousin Chang, and their friends Bi and Seng, who were brothers. Bi suggested they take a trip to an area some of the Hmong coined as Black Mountain. He said he had been there a few times and that it was an excellent area for squirrel hunting. The others have never heard of the place, nor do they know where it is, so Bi volunteered to guide them. The men have been hunting a few times before, so they all had their own gear, knew of the etiquette and safety protocols that came with hunting. That day, they drove in two trucks, bringing along two tables, some chairs, and a tent. After finding a suitable spot for camp, they set out on the hunt. Unfortunately, it was a pretty uneventful day. Everyone returned to camp at sundown for dinner. Chui decided to take a nap inside the tent afterwards. When he awoke, it was a little past midnight. Everyone else was gathered around one of the tables outside, engaged in a round of poker. Then from a distance, Chui saw something on top of the table across from the guys playing poker. It was dark, but they had some lights strung up running on a generator. In the dim lighting, it resembled a huge black dog or wolf with what looked like a bell hanging from its collar. What, what, what is that thing over there? Chewy stuttered as he pointed towards the beast. Startled, everyone looked up at Chewy, then over at the thing on top of the table across from them. It stood there, just glaring at them with bright red eyes that could have burned a hole into their souls. Their faces were that of shock and horror as they abandoned the card game and fled into the tent almost instantaneously. After cowering inside for an unknown amount of time, one of the guys worked up enough courage to peek outside and see if the thing had gone. After making sure the coast was clear, they grabbed some flashlights and guns, then made a run for their cars that were parked off the side of the road. Unfortunately, that was still a good ways off and was at least a 10 to 15 minute trek through the woods. It seemed as though the journey back to their cars wouldn't end, almost as if they were going around in circles. All the while the presence of the beast lurked around them, stalking them, ready to pounce at any second. Then from the bushes somewhere came the subtle ringing of a bell causing one of the men to yelp. You, you guys hear that? Asked Chewie in a shuddering breath. Hear what? Asked Tao. 
That, that sound, it sounded like a bell. Chu replied. I didn't hear anything, responded Chang. The group froze in its track, trying to pinpoint the source of the sound. Nervous and shaking, the men hesitantly scanned the area with their flashlights and guns in hand, not really wanting to discover the surprise waiting for them. They heard and found nothing after a moment of searching and continued onwards. The men had gone about 20 paces when they heard rustling from behind. It, it's following us, said Chewy. Shh, Tao whispered, trying to focus on the sound. Everyone stopped tentatively, pointing their flashlights in every direction, attempting to spot anything unusual. After he was satisfied with the search, Tao said, Come on, let's go. Quickly now, the sooner we get to the cars, the better we'll all feel. As soon as he said that, a branch snapped from somewhere close by. The men whipped the direction of their lights around, frantically looking for their pursuer. Then came the rustling. Chewie heard it and spun around. The bushes were moving just 20 feet from him and the rustling got closer and faster. It sounded like something was coming straight toward him. In a panic, Chui dropped his flashlight to arm himself with the shotgun. Right before he fired, he saw two big bright red eyes staring back at him with the soft chime of the bell. Chui swallowed hard with a case of cotton mouth. His hands shook, his heart beat deafening, and his aim was far from steady. There! Chewie managed to blurt out, and the barrel of the shotgun exploded as smoke filled the air. It happened so fast, the others didn't even have time to react, only turning in Chewie's direction after his gun went off. There was a moment of silence after the echoes of the gun. Then came a cackle from above. It sounded like that of a hyena and at that instant everyone bolted as fast as they could. Chewie didn't even bother to pick up his flashlight. They did not stop until they reached their cars. The men hid in the safety of their cars until morning came, then left after returning to camp for their things. They didn't see anything unusual that morning. On their trip home, they promised never to speak about it ever again or tell anyone else about their supernatural encounter. My friend Long hasn't gone hunting for a few years now because of the experiences he had while out in the woods. He and some friends used to go to a place the Hmong called Black Mountain. They called it that because of how dark the woods got, most likely due to the tall and dense trees in the area. They say not many people go there because it was supposedly haunted. They say the place gives off a dark or negative energy so people feel really uneasy while there. It's known to be a good area for small game hunting though. On that day, Long and his friends decided they were going to Black Mountain, despite its reputation. They each had walkie-talkies, since it was easier to communicate if they should split up, which they usually do. Long and his friends had camped there the night before. The next day, the group decided to split up again. Long was by himself and wandering through the woods when his walkie-talkie started producing some static. <laughs> then a woman's voice came on. Can you please help me find my shoe? I think I lost it near the stream, the woman whispered in Mong. Long thought it strange to hear the woman's voice since there were no women in their hunting party. Even stranger was that she spoke Hmong. 
It freaked him out, so he didn't respond. The Hmong have a superstition that if you ever hear anyone mention your name or talk to you, and if you don't see anyone around, do not respond, otherwise they will follow you. He kept hearing the voice every once in a while after that, but couldn't make out what it was saying. They all sounded like muffled whispers. As scared as he was, he didn't tell any of his friends since he didn't want to alarm them. The men went back to the hunting grounds several times after that, and he kept hearing the woman over the walkie. Like before, she always whispered and mumbled unintelligible things that never made sense. It just sounded like gibberish. One day, he decided to bring it up when they met at camp during lunch. He asked if anyone heard a woman over the radio, but none of them heard anything. He finally told them about the voice he kept hearing. They didn't hear her at first, but as time went on, everyone eventually heard her on the walkie-talkie. One of the guys asked who she was, but only got silence in return. They tried switching walkie-talkies and the channels, but Long continued to hear the whispers. For some strange reason, it only came on his walkie. They decided to go to other locations away from Black Mountain, but the hauntings persisted. Then one day, he heard her as clear as day, just like the first time she came on. Can you help blow my eye? It's bothering me, the woman whispered. Long never once mentioned it to his wife until a year later. That day, the hunting party went to Black Mountain again. Long spotted a squirrel perched high atop a tree. He took it down with a single shot, but when he ran over to get it, there were two of them laying there side by side. One of them had a wound, but the other didn't. He couldn't explain it, but he decided to take both of them anyway. That afternoon, he told the elder in the group about the strange occurrence. The elder took a look at the squirrels and said one of them was bad, and it looked like it had been decomposing for some time which was bizarre because Long could have sworn the bodies were still warm when he collected them earlier. The old man threw away the bad one and said it was a bad omen. He also told Long to consult a shaman for help. When Long got home later that day, he and his wife consulted with a shaman who said the causes of his experience were from demons in the forest exploiting his depression. The shaman saw that Long often felt lonely and vulnerable because he had no real relatives or parents anymore. He continued, saying that Long yearned for a place or family, so the demons took advantage of it. He suggested that Long and his wife have a healing ritual performed. He also warned Long never to go hunting ever again. The couple had the ritual performed the following weekend. And from that day on, he never went hunting again.